Catherine Manny was brought to the emergency room after collapsing at her home. The patient showed signs of distress. She was perhaps in an aversive state due to several factors. Catherine had her first case of heart failure two years ago. Since then, she's been diagnosed with coronary heart disease, anterior myocardial infraction, and hypertension. Complications from her heart failure led to the need for a surgical procedure to replace a mitral valve. Catherine was prescribed lenoxin to help her treat irregular heartbeat, Lasix and Eldactin to treat fluid buildup due to a heart failure and possible liver scarring, Lisinopril and Lupressor to treat high blood pressure, and Zoka to lower her LDL and help her raise her HDL. Catherine is also currently on supplements such as Metamucil and Centrum Silver multivitamin. She does not drink or smoke. Her parents, however, have a history of hypertension and coronary heart disease. Catherine is a 65-year-old Caucasian female. She is married and lives with her husband. She is a mother of four. Catherine is a high school graduate. She is a retired caterer. With the signs and symptoms of this patient, let's start out with her recent history, which includes a having a poor appetite for the last six months due to shortness of breath and nausea. The nausea is a possible side effect of her blood pressure medications, and she, as a result, had been only eating soft foods, particularly ice cream and two cans of Boost per day. She's exhibited no weight loss, though the husband is unable to know the difference between what her real weight is and what is the fluid that she's retaining. In appearance, her arms, shoulders, and face seem skinnier than normal, and her integumentary includes her skin being gray and moist. Now looking at her vital signs, her body temperature is currently 98 degrees, which is normal, and her blood pressure is being regulated at 90 over 70 as a result of her medications though her resting heart rate is 110 beats a minute, which is considered high. And an elevated resting heart rate can be a sign of tachycardia, which leads to complications, particularly heart failure. It is to note that a few of her medications do carry serious side effects, which include shortness of breath and elevated heart rate. Her current respiratory rate is 24, which is to note that those over 12 years old should be under 25 breaths per minute, and anything over that while resting is considered abnormal. Among the conditions that can change a normal respiratory rate include asthma, anxiety, pneumonia, and congestive heart failure. So this patient is currently borderline. Her current weight is 105 pounds, and her height is five feet, two inches tall. Continuing with her signs and symptoms, medical symptoms included heart disease, so first, the history of CAD, mitral valve replacement, heart failure, and anterior MI. She's currently expressing heart-diffused PMI in AL and LLD, grade 2, holocystic murmur at apex radiating to the left border, first heart sound diminished, and second heart sound preserved, third heart sound present, and rails in both lung bases posteriorly. Continuing with the medical symptoms of this patient, those also include those of the head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat. This patient exhibited temporal wasting of the head, in which wasting of the temporalis muscle mass is commonly seen in cases of significant catabolism and or generalized nutritional deficiency. This patient has had a poor appetite for the last six months due to her shortness of breath and nausea, in which she's expressed thinness in her shoulders, neck, and face as a result of possible muscle wasting. The patient also exhibited in the eyes AV crossing changes 
and arterial spasm, in which ED crossing changes in the eyes indicate signs of hypertensive retinopathy, which occurs when retinal vessels get damaged due to elevated blood pressure. Though her blood pressure is currently being controlled with medications, she may still have episodes of hypertension in which can exhibit signs of hypertensive retinopathy. This patient also exhibited in the throat jugular vein distension and sitting with positive hepatojugular reflux. The internal jugular vein is observed to assess central venous pressure, with the most common cause of raised jugular venous pressure being congestive cardiac failure, in which the raised venous pressure reflects right ventricular failure. Continuing to look at the signs and symptoms is also to examine the extremities and abdomen. This patient exhibited a pedal edema at a 2 plus, in which pitting pedal edema is a cardinal sign of heart failure. At a 2 plus, it's considered a moderate pitting edema, which is indicated by around a four millimeter depression lasting 10 to 15 seconds. So one or both of your heart's chambers will lose their ability to pump blood efficiently. As a result, the blood will back up into the legs, ankles, and feet, causing edema. Addressing this patient's weak grip strength, it has been known that those with low grip strength had weaker hearts and were able to pump less blood around the body. A low hand grip strength can be associated with having enlarged damaged hearts. In the abdomen area, though infrequent, acetites is also caused by congenitive heart failure. It results from the transudation from hepatic and per peritoneal veins. It's most frequently occurring with patients with tricuspid valve disease and constrictive pericarditis. Also, heart failure can rob the liver of the blood that is needed to work. The fluid builds build up that comes with it puts extra pressure on the portal vein, which brings blood to the liver. As a result, this can scar the organ to the point where it doesn't work as well as it should. The patient has a history of shellfish allergies. She prefers to follow a diet that is low in salt, fat, and dietary cholesterol. She regularly consumes a Metamucil fiber supplement as well as 1,000 milligrams per day of calcium supplement and a multivitamin. Her household food purchases come from a combination of both herself and her spouse. This patient is showing many abnormal lab values that can be connected to her condition of heart failure. For example, her troponins, CPK, lactate dehydrogenase, BMP, and carbon dioxide pressure are all elevated, which is very common in the case of heart failure. She's also showing some severe liver problems, including elevated ALT and AST with decreased albumin and prealbumin proteins. Uh, liver failure or liver problems are also very highly correlated with heart failure, so this shouldn't be surprising. Uh, she's also showing very high elevated of neutrophil percentages. In many cases, this could be a sign of an infection, which is it's possible that that could be going on, but it could also be just connected to the immune system going into overdrive as a result of her heart situation. The patient also appears to be showing some issues with her kidneys, her creatinine is high, her BUN is high, and her GFR are low. Also, she's showing some symptoms of dehydration, her sodium is low, and her specific gravity is high. It's hard to tell whether the dehydration is a symptom of the kidney and heart issues or whether that's more of a symptom of the diuretics that she has been prescribed as part of a treatment plan. But either way, it should be continued to be monitored for in order to ensure her safety. This patient is showing lab values that are consistent with anemia, which may explain some of her symptoms, including pale, moist skin and fatigue. Her hemoglobin is low, her hematocrit is low, her transfer and bilirubin are high, and not surprisingly, her overall red blood cell count is low. It's possible that her anemia is a consequence of her health conditions, or it's also possible that it may be due to the major dietary she 
changes that she recently made. She cut out some major food groups, which may be contributing to this. Either way, regardless of what the biggest factors are contributing to her anemia, this is definitely something that will need to be addressed through a nutritional intervention. The patient is showing some major signs of metabolic syndrome. Her CRP is high, which is a proxy for inflammation. She has dyslipidemia, including low HDL and high LDL, and her insulin resistance is high, evidenced by her high blood glucose. So all of these things very likely preceded her heart failure. They probably have been present for many, many years, and these factors combine together to increase the rate of her heart problems. Here is the medical orders for Mrs. Manny. There are parental dopamine and intravenous diuretic because of heart failure and 100 mg thiamine intravenously to prevent a lack of thiamine. And the first meal type order for her is 2 gram sodium restriction. According to the Heart Failure Society of America, sodium restriction is recommended 2 to 3 grams per day for patients with heart failure. Because low sodium intake improves heart failure outcomes. And the second meal type order is 15,000 milliliter fluid restriction due to her history of heart failure. As more fluid in the bloodstream, it makes harder heart pumping. Therefore, fluid restriction can avoid overloading her heart. An intake percentage of meals is less than 5%. And fluid requirement for Mrs. Manny is 15,000 milliliter. This patient's age is 65 years old, height is 157.48 cm, and weight is 47.6 kg. So here is the calculation for this patient's daily energy balance and protein requirement. So this patient's total daily energy balance is 1,393.175 calories per day and protein intake is required between 34.83 grams and 121.90 grams. The first PES statement is based on Catherine's history and the observation provided by her husband. Catherine's low energy intake appears to be a product of some restrictions in important food groups. Based on Catherine's history, an important intervention for her will be to educate her about nutrition. Further, she will be provided with education materials about nutrient-dense food. Records show that she has been having issues with consuming food orally. Therefore, she will be educated about foods such as smoothies that contain vegetables, fiber, and protein. Additionally, she will be provided with more information about how to monitor her sodium intake. Catherine has been inactive since she retired and a sedentary lifestyle is probably not helping her condition. Therefore, some physical activity will be recommended once she has been cleared by a physician to perform exercise. The second PES statement will focus on the patient's signs and symptoms. Mrs. Manny's poor appetite for the last six months, with no weight loss, Related to her shortness of breath and nausea, as evidenced by her intake of predominantly soft foods, with her arms, shoulders, and face appearing skinnier than normal. While ultimately we will want to address this patient's shortness of breath and nausea, in the meantime, she will probably want to maintain a soft foods diet. Though to prevent any further regressions in her body composition, 
it is important that we educate this patient on what her daily nutrient requirements are and how she would be able to fulfill them while on a soft foods diet. There is also an opportunity for this patient to learn how to take a variety of foods and prepare them in a way that she would be able to better consume them. Though it is recommended that she meets with a registered dietitian who will be able to best educate her on what her daily nutrient requirements are and to help create a soft foods dietary plan that will best meet these requirements. This patient is showing anemia related to heart failure and or reduction in food intake as evidenced by pale, moist skin, reduced RBC, hemoglobin, hematocrit, ferritin, and iron, as well as elevated transferrin and bilirubin. The goal of the nutrition intervention is to restore red blood cell count, hemoglobin, ferritin, and iron by supplementing with iron either through enteral mechanisms or possibly intravenous mechanisms. The fourth PA statement will focus on patients' energy balance and protein. Mrs. Manny's inadequate energy intake related to the risk of cachexia as evidenced by consuming less amount of meals and protein intakes. Before moving to the nutrition intervention, I would like to talk more about cardiac cachexia because Mrs. Manny has the risk of this condition. So cardiac cachexia is a pathological condition associated with heart failure and commonly referred to as body wasting syndrome. So the main symptoms of cardiac cachexia are a short of breath, fatigue and poor appetite, and unintentional weight loss and decreased muscle strength. And these symptoms are caused by fluid buildup from heart failure, which could make it harder to absorb nutrients from food, and also caused by low energy intake and malnutrition. Here is the nutrition intervention for the fourth PES statement. The goal is to provide nutritional support and adequate protein intake for obtaining and maintaining a normal range of body weight. So for nutritional support, it should be started with small amounts and slowly increased and should be encouraged to eat smaller and more frequent meals. And the minimum recommendation for protein intake is 1.5 to 2.0 gram per kilogram per day.